السلام علیکم کلاس ہمارا آج کا ٹاپک ہے ہیمیٹوپوسس ہیمیٹوپوسس کیا ہے کیسے ہوتا ہے یہ تمام کی تمام چیزیں آج ہم اس لیکچر میں کور کریں گے دا آبجیکٹیوز آف دا ہیمیٹوپوسس از سب سے پہلے جو ہم ڈسکس کریں گے دیٹ از اے سائٹ اف ہیمیٹوپوسس ہیمیٹوپوئٹک سٹم اور دا پروجینیٹر سیلز پرون میرو اسٹروما سیلز the regulation of the hematopoiesis hematopoietic growth factors growth factor receptors in the signal transduction the adhesion molecules the cell cycle the transcription factors epigenetics and apoptosis at the end <clears throat> so it is <clears throat> a process of blood cell formation in the first few weeks of the gestation the yolk sac is the transient site of the hematopoiesis definitive hemopoiesis derives from a population of the stem cells first observed on the agm that is the aorta gonades mesenterocyte these common precursors of the endothelial and the hematopoietic cells are believed to see the liver spleen bone marrow six weeks until six to seven months of the fetal life the liver and the spleen are the major hemopoietic organ and it continues to produce blood cells until about 2 weeks after birth during normal childhood and adult life the bone marrow is the only source of the new blood cells no other source is available the developing cells are situated outside the bone marrow cells and sinuses and the mature cells are released into the sinus spaces <clears throat> let's discuss the site of hemopoiesis in the fetuses like in the infants and the adults the bone marrow is practically present in all bones but in the fetuses from 0 to 2 months that is a yolk sac so yolk sac ke andar ye hemopoiesis ho rahi hoti hai after 2 to 7 months there is liver and spleen which are working and 5 to 9 months the bone marrow is working <clears throat> in infants the bone marrow is working and all the cells are being made in the bone marrow in the adults the vertebrae the lips the st- ribs sternum skull sacrum pelvis proximal ends of the femur these are those parts where the hemopoiesis is happening <clears throat> hemopoietic stems in the progenitor cells hemopoiesis starts with a pluri potential stem cells that can be asymptomatic asymmetric sorry cell division self renew but also give rise to the separate cell lineages so the stem cell is able to make many kind of cells it could differentiate into any kind of cell these cells are able to repopulate a bone marrow from which all the stem cells have been eliminated by the lethal irradiation or chemotherapy so if we will transfer yeah if we'll transplant someone's bone marrow and it will matlab agar wo sahi chala gaya it goes well aapka successful ho chuka transplant تو پھر وہاں پر جو اسٹیم سیلز ہوں گے وہ تمام کی تمام کمی کو پورا کر دیں گے وہ تمام سیلز کو دوبارہ جنریٹ کرنا اسٹارٹ کر دیں گے اینڈ ان کے پوٹینشیل کی وجہ سے وہ پورا کا پورا بون میرو دوبارہ بنا لیں گے یہ ان کیسز میں ہوتا ہے جن کا بون میرو صحیح سے کام نہیں کر رہا ہوتا یا پھر کوئی کینسرس سیلز آ جاتے ہیں یا پھر ان کے اندر بون میرو جو ہے وہ بن ہی نہیں رہا ہوتا ڈیو ٹو سم ریزن کوئی جینیٹک ڈس آرڈر ہو جاتا ہے کوئی میوٹیشن آ جاتی ہے سو سیل ڈفرینشیشن آفرس فرام دا اسٹیم سیلز we are committed to hemopoietic progenitor cells which are restricted in their development potential the existence of the separate progenitor cells can be demonstrated by in vitro culture techniques very early progenitors are received by the cultures on the bones the marrow stroma as long term culture initiating cells whereas late progenitors are generally assayed in the semi solid medium <clears throat> so if we'll see this diagram you can see a pluripotential stem cell a pluripotent stem cell is forming the common myelite progenitor cells and the common lymphoid progenitor cells that will forms the t t lymphocyte cells b lymphocytes and nk cells natural killers cfu will make bfu the erythroid progenitors that will make red blood cells the cfu mega karyocyte progenitors and the cfu gm that is the granulocytes monocytes progenitor eosinophil progenitors and they will form macrophages granulocytes monocytes 
red blood cells, eosinophils, basophils, B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, and the natural killer cells. Beach me, you have to thymus when you are in common lymphoid progenitor cells. So, this means that the common cells are immature and they 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 are so bone marrow stroma kya hai the bone marrow stroma the bone marrow forms a suitable environment for the stem cell survival self renewal and formation of the differentiated progenitor cells composed of the stromal cells and the microvascular network as you know every cell needs vasculation the every cell need blood every cell need oxygen every cell need nutrition so it will be provided by the vascular network. The stromal cells included mesenchymal cells, adipocytes, fibroblasts, osteoblasts, endothelial cells, the macrophages, and they all secrete extracellular molecules such as collagen, glycoproteins, and the glycosaminoglycans to form extracellular matrix. So these are the stromal cells which are making the extracellular matrix. The stem cells which are able to traffic around the body and are found in the peripheral blood in lower numbers in order to exit the bone marrow cells must cross the blood vessel endothelium. <clears throat> so here comes the diagram. The macrophages which are attached to the endothelium. These are the endothelial cells and the osteoblasts are also present. The stem cells which are making interactions with the fibroblast and the fibroblast which is making interactions with the osteoblast the mesenchymal cells are also present so adhesion molecules the growth factors if you can see here the growth factors are adhesion molecules which are adhesion ligands are growth factor receptors and this is why they are connected to each other one side is matrix one side is stem cells we are telling hemopoiesis that they grow in the micro environment specific recognition sites hoti hai, adhesion sites hoti hai. regulation of the hemopoiesis the hemopoiesis starts with the stem cell division in which one cell replaces the stem cells self renewal and the other is committed to the differentiation these early committed progenitor express low levels of transcription factors that may commit them to discrete cell lineages. Which cell lineage is selected for differentiation may depend both on chance and on the external signals received by the progenitor cells. Several transcription factors regulate the survival of the stem cells, whereas others are involved in the differentiation along the major cell lineages. Transcription factors include induced synthesis of the pro proteins specific to a cell lineages. For example, the, the erythroid-specific genes for globin and the heme synthesis having binding motifs to the GATA1. I have told you before and explained you before how this GATA1 is involved in this growth. So the glycoprotein hormones that regulate the proliferation and the differentiation of the hematopoietic progenitor cells and the function of the mature blood cells. The growth factors may cause cell proliferation but can also stimulate the differentiation, maturation, prevent apoptosis, and affect the picture function of the mature cells. Let's discuss the features of the growth factors. That growth factor action is that two or more factors may synergize in stimulating a particular cells to proliferate and differentiate. Synergistic work <clears throat> but the action of one growth factor on a cell may stimulate the production of an other growth factor or the receptor. The biological effects of the growth factors in which specific receptors on the target cells are there and they are mediated through the growth factors. Growth factors may stimulate the proliferation of the early bone marrow cells and direct the differentiation of one or other, side, other type of cells. After that, cell maturation will start and suppress apoptosis because there is a maturation occurring and it will affect the function of the mature non-dividing cells. There are some uh, growth factors included which act on the stromal cells are the interleukin 1 and tumor necrotic factor. They act on pluripotential stem cells, SCF, FLT3L, VEGF. 
act on the multipotential progenitor cells are the IL3, that is interleukin 3, GMCSF, interleukin 6, GCSF, and thrombocytin. That act on the progenitor cells is GCSF, MCSF, interleukin 5, and thrombocytin, and thrombocytin. You have to learn these tables. Cell cycle. So it is a complex process. Which, is, which lies the heart of the hemopoiesis. Dysregulation of the cell proliferation may develop the malignant diseases. And there is some mitotic phase during which the cell physically divides and then the interphase in which the chromosomes are duplicated and the cell growth occurs. And then the M phase in which further partition into the classical mitosis in which nuclear division is accomplished and then the cytokinesis and which cell fission occurs. The interphase is divided into three main stages. G1 stage, cell begins to commit the replication. S phase, in which the DNA content is doubled and the chromosomes replicate. And the G2 phase, in which the cell organelles are copied and the cytoplasmic volume is increased. Let's talk about the transcription factors. You guys have read about transcription and translation very well. Transcription factors regulate gene expression by controlling the transcription of the specific genes of the genes families. They contain at least two domains, the DNA binding domain and the activation domain. Mutation, deletion, translocation, transcription factors underlying in many cases of the hematological neuroplasm. Epigenetic refers to the changes in the DNA and the chromatin that affect the gene expression other than those that affect DNA sequence. So then comes the apoptosis. As I have told you before, the apoptosis was suppressed due to the maturation of the cells, which are getting mature. So we we'll suppress the apoptosis. But apoptosis is a program regulated process of a physiological cell death in which individual cells are triggered to activate intracellular proteins that lead to the death of the cells. Morphologically, it is characterized by the cell shrinkage, and after that, it will condense. The nuclear chromatin material will be condensed and fragmentized, <clears throat> and the cleavage of the DNA will start. Important process for maintaining the tissue homo homeostasis and lymphocyte development. Necrosis is the death of the cells that are adjacent to the cells of ischemia chemical trauma, hyperthermia. So apoptosis is a normal process and necrosis is in result due to, in result of any accident. Cell swells in the plasma membrane loses its integrity and usually an inflammatory infiltrant is response of the spillage of the cell content. So what is autophagy? The digestion of the cell organelles by the lysosomes and it will cause cell death ultimately. So if you'll see the apoptosis, the death factors that fast ligands is Causing, okay, here we see our cytotoxic drug radiation. Why is it DNA damage? Now DNA damage is because of gene expression. Is P53 is because of Bax gene expression. Bax gene protein is increasing in Bax protein. This is because of what is happening. That cytochrome C is being released, and BCL2 is inhibited. Also, BCL2 is इंक्रीज बीसीएल टू सर्वाइवल ग्रोथ फैक्टर होता है जिसको इनहिबिट कर देते हैं फिर उसके बाद साइटोक्रोम सी रिलीज होता है और वो फिर क्या करता है प्रो कैस्पेजिस से कैस्पेजिस करके लाकर अपोप्टोसिस करवा देता है <coughs> पहले हमने पढ़ी थी मैचुरेशन मैचुरेशन के बाद हम आए अपोप्टोसिस की तरफ क्यों आए कि जब मैचुरेशन हो रही होती है तब ये प्रोसेस रुका हुआ होता है लेकिन आफ्टर द मैचुरेशन द अपोप्टोसिस स्टार्ट नॉर्मली अपोप्टोसिस हमारी बॉडी के अंदर होता है ये नॉर्मल सेल डेथ है जो कि एक अपने टाइम पीरियड को या एरा को कंप्लीट करने के बाद खत्म हो जाता है इसी के साथ हमारा लेक्चर जो है वो खत्म होता है